first of all, like, con congratulations on your success. Like, you've achieved so much in such a little time. Like, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. from, no, it's okay. So you're from Mobile in Alabama, is that right? Yes, it's, it's Mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the third most populated city in um, Alabama, but you're also the only female rapper to come out of that city. So the support must mm -hmm. be overwhelming. What was it like growing up there? And what's the support been like? Um, It was, growing up there, you know, like it was kind of hard trying to find like, you know, resources and stuff to do music because, like, we don't really have that much of a, a music background there. But, you know, that didn't stop me. So, like, I, I kind of got a grip onto, like, one studio that I've always went to ever since I started. So that's really, you know, been my groove with it. But I would say it was pretty hard because not many people believe that you will make it out because not many people do make it out of that city. So it's hard, you know, getting support from there. But I got through it, so yeah. Okay. So your um full name, can you just remind me? It's Tamia Monique Carter, is that right? Yes, that's so my name. how did you get from um Tamia to Flo Millie? Like how did that stage name come about? Um Flow came from, you know, everybody would say, like, my flow was dope. When I would post, like, Instagram videos on Instagram, well, rap videos on Instagram, they would say, like, the one thing about me was my flow. So I just put that in my name. And Millie was always a part of my name when I was in, like, girl groups and stuff growing up. So I just kept that at the end of it. So Okay. And um, that leads nicely onto the next question. I was going to ask, I've heard um a little bit through the grapevine watching a few videos that you were originally in a rap group when you were younger so tell me ab about that what what was the transition like like when did you go from you know just just writing raps for fun to actually taking it seriously as a career what was when was that transition that transition was like i want to say when i was 16 because I started rapping when I was 11 but I never really stepped foot into a studio till I was like 16 17 so like I would say around 2017 was when I started to take it serious and I stopped the group kind of ended like in 2014 so like a, I took like a year off like after that so I would say 2015 I was kind of like I didn't know what to do because I was so used to being in a group so then like when I got around that age I just started to write more and just experiment more and then that's when I started to go to the studio with it. Okay so um you're someone who is at the size from your amazing lyrics um, and, and the choice of production and just your brand in general you're someone who comes off as very confident and you demonstrate this throughout all of your music with your bold zero tolerance um lines in and your zero tolerance for drama for for, for, for men we hear that in a lot of your music where does that confidence come from and how can me or your fans learn to be as confident as you like what tips would you give um, I will always stay, tr stay true to yourself, you know, like always have self-respect and self-care and self-love. That's really where my attitude comes from because, you know, anybody that doesn't love their self is not going to be stern with other people. So you, it really starts with you. Like it's no really formula that I can give. I'm just being myself. So I would say like every girl that wants to embody that, just stand by what you believe in. Like never take any bullshit from anybody. Always respect yourself and walk with confidence. Know you the shit. Affirm that shit every single day and you'll be just like that. So okay. So um one of your most infamous lines is I like cash from my hair to my ass, which we all love over here. Um and that's yeah. what the song Beef Flow Mix. And you talk about hair in your music a lot. And just as you know, a bit of trivia, what would you say has been um your most exciting hairstyle that you've had throughout your career? Um, my most exciting hairstyle. I want to say the one for my mixtape cover because I never tried blonde until that that time and um I was really pleased with how they came out because I didn't expect it to look that good so I would say the blonde flip hairstyle that I had that was my favorite. Are we gonna see more Flo Millie and Blonde or was that like a closed chapter? <laughs> Um, I would say yeah, cause I've I haven't even tapped into everything I'm gonna do, so I would say y'all see way more of it. 
I'm looking forward to it. So your fans call yourself call themselves the Flow Militants. Um, what was it like hearing this for, for the first time? Did that come from you or was it the fan base itself? I think it was the fan base because I didn't start seeing that till like just now on Twitter. I was like, what does that mean? Like <laughs> I kept seeing like Flow Mish. Flow, how do you say it? Flow Flow, flow Militants. Flow Militia. <laughs> yeah, it was Flow mi Militants and Flow Militia, and okay. I was just. Like, I don't know what that means, but I'm with it if y'all with it. So <laughs> I'm just kind of going with the flow. Okay. So um, you have, um, as, as you said before, you've been rapping since the age of 11, quoting the likes of Nicki Minaj, for example, as your inspirations. Um, as well as Nicki Minaj, you've also quoted the likes of Jill Scott and Erica Badu as people who you would listen to when you were growing up. So which artists do you listen to now? Like which artists or albums are at the top of your playlist right now? Right now, I'm like a huge fan of Gunna. Like, I listen to his music all the time. I like Do Up Kane. Um, as far as like female rappers, I love Cardi B. I like Doja Cat, I like City Girls. So it's pretty a mixture of like everybody you see day to day on social media is pretty much what I'm listening to. Okay. So you dropped your video to the um, song week a couple of days ago. Congratulations on that. Um, and both the song and the video are so creatively and meticulously put together and, um, you know, money seems to be a focus of the visuals. So what was the creative um, idea slash direction behind that? Mm -hmm. um, really just pretty much everything that I was saying in the song, like Run That Cash Up, it was just really like a model for females to focus on money, you know, focus on getting that bag and don't be focused on these niggas and them having you and your feelings, like keep your main focus on what you want in life and that's, that's going to bring you up. So that's really where it came from. Okay. So um, you, I'm assuming, um, I'm not 100% sure how the age range works with like um, education over there because it's slightly different here. From my understanding, you left school a few years ago. Um, what was your experience like in, in education? Mm -hmm. And had you not been a rapper, what would Flo Millie be? Um, my experience with education was, um, it was... It was ups and downs, like all the way up to, I think I was in honor society in middle school. No, it was elementary school. And then I think I skipped it in middle school. And then in high school, I was in honor society all the way up to 12th grade. Then I got in a fight and I got kicked out of it. But if I didn't get in that fight, I would still be in there. But I was I was making like pretty decent grades. I would say like straight A's and B's. And um, yeah, like I was pretty pretty focused for the most part and um if rap wasn't the path that that you took where like who would flow millie be um i can't even say i wouldn't take the path of rap and i'm just say that because like i'm a strong believer in following what you're passionate about and ever since i was little i've been passionate about rapping so i don't think i would have ever given up on it it probably would have happened later but i think i would have always at least done that at some part of my life and i also wanted to um be an actress as well so that would be added to it and what what sort of films would you look at being an actress in like are there any particular is there a genre that you like yeah i like tyler perry's movies like from back in the day like i like drama film movies like stuff like that Taraji P. Henson does like I feel like I would be in stuff like that okay so um the topic of cars comes up a lot in your music um you rapped about having a coupe at the age of 19 um in your song eat it up you make references to your Chevy Impala so what car do you currently have and what is your dream car I'm not telling y'all what car I have but I'll tell y'all my dream car um I would say, I don't even have a dream car, honestly. Like, I'm pretty, see, I'm from Alabama, so I don't be seeing, like, all those exotic cars and stuff. So, like, my dream car, to me, would probably be basic to y'all. But um, if I if I could, I would get, like, a Bugatti or something. Um, I, I, I like I hate a lot, so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, you like to touch on your fa family every now and then in your music. Um, how important is family to you? Family is um, very important to me, like now more than ever. 
of course, like I've had my ups and downs with family in the past, but like I think right now is the time that we should come together more than anything because you know like when you don't have nobody else you have family to lean on so i think it's always important to keep you know your relationship good with at least some of your family members okay so um as quoted before you've been rapping for quite some some time and what i like to do is when i'm normally interviewing um a rapper specifically i ask them if they can remember the first ever bar that they wrote and if you can remember it would you be down to give us an exclusive performance of that mm -hmm. yeah um like as far as like the first bar i don't think i want to rap that because i was like 12 or some shit but i yeah. could rap you my first song that i wrote yes i would love that so my first song was called no hook so i'm gonna rap the first couple bars okay okay so you know. You do what they do because you can't fit in. I do what I want because I know what I am. I twerked on him. Now he think I'm a dancer. No hair like my pussy got cancer. And he didn't get no chemo. What is fuck I call it Nemo? Scaring bitches like I'm Devo. Yeah, that's all I remember. Oh, <laughs> it was so it. long. She's had bars <laughs> since early. It's since early. You <laughs> to see it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, if corona permits um eventually fingers crossed when can we expect to see you in the uk um is that so, is that something that's on your list of things to to do mm -hmm. like i definitely want to go out of the country like that's one of my main goals is to like perform somewhere else because i've never been out the country so as soon as corona is fucking over like i'm ready Whenever they book me, I'm out of here. So yeah, just let me know. Y'all ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what can we expect from from you for the rest of 2020? Like, can we expect you know possibly another tape soon? Any more music videos, singles, collaborations? Like, what does the rest of the year have in store for Flomily? The rest of the year has a lot in store. Like um, a lot of opportunities. I'm not gonna um, expose them because I feel like you know. Mm -hmm. It's confidential until it happens, you feel me? So, but I would expect a lot of, I would tell y'all to expect a lot of things like um, collabs, more music videos for sure, and definitely more music. So yeah, it's going to be a good year regardless of Corona. So. Okay, great. Um, if you could collaborate with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Um, it would be Aaliyah. She's dead, but yeah, it would be Aaliyah. Yeah. I like her because she's just, it's just her aura. Like, I really admire her and the fact that she was so young, just like me, and was able to make, like, hits. So I really admire her and I would collab with her. Okay. So um, a lot of your um, success sort of, I wouldn't say it's an it's an overnight thing, but, but you've achieved quite a lot in a short period. Um, space of time um how have you managed to handle that you, you know given um the current climate um and the and the success and the fame it's a lot to take on like how do you navigate through that and what sort of keeps you going um definitely like staying grounded protecting my energy and um staying busy you know i don't l really let it overwhelm me but i just stay busy i'm always like um looking for different goals to reach so I would say like my mind is focused on what else can I do what else can I do it's not really focused on oh my god like it's happening because I've already reached that like literally last year and I'm kind of past that phase so I'm just really just soaking it in and just moving up to the next level okay that's great um, and then the last question is, are there any, um, do you listen to any U UK music or are there any that you've had your eye on um, I wouldn't say I listen to it, but I've heard it like in snippets and stuff. I can't really remember. It was one girl. She, um, I think she did a song with Nikki. I forgot her name, but she was a dark skinned female rapper. And, um, I think she's really dope. Miss Smith Banks. It was probably Miss Banks. But yeah. Probably, yeah. But yeah, that's great. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, do you have any like final message that you want to give to the Flow Militants, Flow Militia, um, whichever subgroups um, of your friends there are? Yes, I want to tell them like if they have anything that they want to do in life, stick to it and don't give up. Don't listen to the naysayers and 
fuck fear, do what you want to do. So, yeah.